Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the DJI Osmo handheld gimbal and the fourth axis adapter. I've been using the Osmo on a number of film projects recently and it really is an awesome piece of kit. It's very light, it just works and you get tremendous results. The only problem comes is when you're walking or running or doing a panning shot you tend to pick up the up and down movement which yields in a very strange looking bouncy footage. You can eliminate this to some extent by walking in this strange ninja manner by bending your knees which is a bit weird. Fortunately DJI actually have an add-on to eliminate this problem which is the fourth axis or z-axis stabiliser. It's basically a simple steady cam mechanism which uses a spring between these two opposite points on this parallelogram to eliminate the bounce. Fitting it is pretty easy. You just unlock the X3 camera Fit the fourth axis, clamp it up with this restraining screw onto the rosette and then fix the camera onto the top of the fourth axis adapter and then when you turn your Osmo on it behaves exactly as it did before with the three axis gimbal. The only difference is as you move up and down and when you're running, it doesn't look quite right here, but you this eliminates the up and down movement. There's a small knurled knob at the top here which controls the center point so you can control where the end points are because obviously it will hit the bottom here or hit the top there you really want it to sit in at about the middle now, this is great but sometimes I use my Zenmoo's X5 camera for my Inspire on top of the Osmo which yields even better uh, video results And again, DJI produce an adapter which allows you to fit the X5 to the top of the Osmo handle. This is it. It extends all the connections through and it moves the connection point further forward. Again, this just clips on to the top of the Osmo. locks in place with the restraining bar on the rosette and you can then attach your X5 camera to the Osmo handle which although it's a bit heavier and you don't get as good battery life it does yield even better video results now what would be nice is to be able to use the 4th Z or Z axis movement um, stabiliser with the X5 but unfortunately this is designed to work with the weight of the X3 and I'll show you what happens when you try and attach that camera Just turn this off Take the X5 off. I think you can probably see what's going to happen. So we attach the fourth axis to the Osmo as before. We still need to fit the Osmo to X5 adapter to this end of the fourth axis stabiliser 
and then the X5 will actually lock in place and you can immediately see what happens. The additional weight of the X5 causes the fourth axis or Z axis to just drop all the way to the bottom. It's not really designed to take that weight. And even if you adjust the spring tension here, at its strongest setting, it still just sits right at the bottom. So what I've come up with is a very simple solution, which I think is pretty well engineered and it's very cheap, that allows you to switch relatively easily between the two cameras and continue to use the fourth axis adapter. So here we have all the components. We've got the Osmo handle, the X3 camera, which we're not going to be using, put that to one side. This is the adapter to mount the X5 camera onto the Osmo or onto the end of the fourth axis. And here's the X5 camera. Now there are some YouTube videos around and some people have actually modified this by taking it apart and replacing the spring which is sitting between here and here with a stronger spring, which is a fine way to do it. But unfortunately, if you then want to go back to using your Z3 camera, or X3 camera, sorry, so you want to go back to use your X3 camera, you're going to have to take everything apart and put this spring back. And it would be quite nice to be able to swap between the two fairly quickly, depending on what it is you're trying to do. So the solution I've come up with is quite a simple one. This is a spring for a Nitro RC car. These are very nicely made. They cost two or three pounds. Uh, it's basically a shock absorber and compression spring all made into one nice little package which is adjustable. You can control just by moving this screw here, you can control how strong or what the resistance is here. And the nice thing is it's a compression spring. Uh, the mechanism in here is using a spring which is pulled. If we can combine the two, we'll get a really nice movement. Because what we're trying to achieve is to increase the strength of that spring to stop this moving all the way down under the weight of the X5. What we're going to do is basically mount this shock absorber between these two points externally by replacing the two cap head screws here with longer ones and this shock absorber. Unfortunately this is a little bit too short and in its fully unsprung position it's 15 millimeters too short this way. So what I've made up is a 3D printed a small extension piece to fit onto the end here which screws in quite simply with an M3 by 10 cap head bolt. I'll leave links in the description below to everything that I use to make this so you can make up your own or I mean there, there are loads of these on eBay all over the place most radio control shops sell them but now as we can see that is just slightly longer than the distance between there and there which is where we're gonna actually mount this. So all we're gonna do is remove these two bolts here and the small bearings and fix this on the outside. So carefully undo these screws. Depending on what model you've got these these screws may be captive they may have a washer on the back but as you can see there's a small bearing here which sits in 
that hole there. Basically once you've taken the bolt out you can just push the bearing back inside. This isn't going to spring apart because you're only taking out two screws so you don't have to worry about springs suddenly jumping out at you and everything falling apart. Again, those are the two bolts. You need to keep those two bolts because you'll have to put those back in if you put your X3 camera back on. So to get this to fit and to sort of fit quite nicely uh, we take some M3 cap head screws, these are 20 millimeters long and we fix that through there. Put an M3 nut on this side this is just to hold it in place and stop it moving about. Um, if you put another M3 nut on there. This allows you to tighten this down. Make sure you get it lined up onto the the screw on that side. As you can see, the 20 millimeter screw just keeps this clear of the body, you don't want to scratch that. Next we can take another M3 by 20 put that through the bottom hole and I will leave, if anybody's interested and they want this extension piece I'll put it on Thingiverse so you can create it or if you want more printing just let me know. The nice thing about this, these shock absorbers do look very nice, they're very nicely made, all anodized. Again, we do the same trick. We put two nuts on here, one to retain the bolt itself, the other to stop this being screwed in too far into. The body and then just screw that in nip it up so that it all stays nice and solid. This is just remaining clear now and as you can see this gives an additional spring but it's a compression spring this time and this mechanism here is a piston with oil in it so it's actually a nice damped mechanism and you can adjust this to make it stronger or weaker. In fact once the X5 camera is on this has no bearing on the the setting. So let's put this all back together and see what, we'll, see what we've got. it in the locked position, there we go. So that fits onto there. You have to have this on because it just gives it a bit of strain relief. Bear in mind everything is now centered away from you. You don't want to put any strain on this this collar here. Then we can fit the X5 adapter and make sure that's locked. There's nothing to screw onto this time. And then we can fit the X5 and lock that on. There we go. So that's the way this works. So it's balanced beautifully with the additional weight of the X5. So there we go, a nice what looks like well engineered solution. But don't forget to keep these screws safe so that when you want to take this off 
to replace it with your X3, you can simply unscrew these, put them in your carry case and put the X3 on just by replacing those bolts. Nice and simple. Hope you found that useful. I think this is a fairly neat solution. It's incredibly cheap. Basically, the shock absorber is going to cost a couple of pounds and the bolts you've probably got lying around. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my very best to try and answer them. I'll leave links to all the components which I've used to build this below. If anybody wants the 3D printed extension piece for the bottom of the shock absorber, let me know and I'll make the files available. Okay, see you next time.